To become a profitable trader, you need to journal your trades. It might seem important doing the risk management or entering the trades when you should be entering the trades following your plan, but you also need to have a solid trading routine. I have a video on my channel that I actually released recently going over my morning routine. I did actually speak about journaling and how it should be part of your everyday trading routine. So in today's video, I'm gonna go into detail on how I journal my trades, how you can benefit from the stats that are actually given to you by Edgewonk that I'm actually using in this video. It's a journal I have been using for many years. You guys can use different alternatives or even if you don't wanna pay for a journal, you could use Notion, you could use Google Sheets, you could use Microsoft Excel. Those are ones that I used for the first couple of years of my journey when I couldn't afford to buy a journaling software. Very, very simple. There are free alternatives to the majority of tools you're required to trade Forex. So I don't want people to say, oh, I can't afford a journal software so I don't actually have to journal my trading. No, that's not a good enough excuse because there are so many free alternatives on the market that you don't need to pay. You do not have any excuses to not journal your trades. Journal every single day in detail. <laughs> that's all you need to do. So I hope you enjoy this video on how I journal my trades. We're gonna to head to the setup now and go through the entire process. What I'm going to do is we're going to go onto Edgewonk now and we're going to set up a new journal to show you from scratch how I would do it if I started from scratch, basically. If you do want to sign up to Edgewonk, this video isn't sponsored, but it is the journaling software I've been using for the past few years now. And there is an affiliate link in the description. If you use code RulesFX, that would be wonderful. And I'm going to go through how I would journal my trades on Edgewonk in particular. So we're going to name it YouTube uh, video because obviously we're here on a YouTube video. Here account currency. A lot of the times I'm trading in USD for prop firm accounts. So we're going to do that. Then here you can go down and choose the, the markets you're actually trading. I'm trading Forex. Uh, Forex is CFDs, but we're going to just trade the Forex anyway. And we're not going to do the deposit or anything yet because sometimes what you'll do is you add a deposit, but then the statement you import has that deposit also. So you, you have to be aware of that. So you come in here and it is going to be blank because obviously you're not going to have any trades on a blank journal because you haven't imported any. So there are two ways to actually do this, or two ways that I actually do this. If you actually come down here to this up arrow, you click that and then it will show you the importer type. And what you can do is auto input your trades and you can link it to uh, your MetaTrader. But for this video, you see it tells you all the description on how to do that, relatively easy. But for this example, I am going to be using an FX replay file because it is easier for me to show you. And then what you do is just drag or drop the CSV file. There we go. And then save and upload. Very, very simple. What you can do is come in here and press add trade and manually input the trade. But in my opinion, it is quite long and tiring. But what you might realize that sometimes people that struggle to journal, they just import their files and then that's all they do. That can be quite lazy and actually having to type in all the information does hold you more accountable for the decisions you've actually made on that trade. So perhaps that might be a better solution for some people that are actually wanting to trade and maybe they make a lot of mistakes. They don't want to just input it into the journal and be done. Sometimes actually recording it and going through every single step of the way, it adds on some extra time, but it can be more beneficial for you. So we have the trades in here. As you see, it says missing initial deposit, which is completely fine. We can add that in. And as you see, we are returning uh, an average of a thousand dollar loss. So we go down here and we will add a deposit. I'm not sure when I started this account. So we're just going to put it on the 1st of January. And we're going to put hundred K in. There we go. Very simple. So now we can go back. We can see the equity graph for the strategy. Very, very nice. You want to pay attention to your equity graph. You don't want one that is all over the place. You want one that is slowly curving to the upside. So ideally you want one that is going like this to the upside. You're not having massive changes in equity because you want to have your equity graph as smooth as possible at all times. It doesn't really matter overall how much profit you've made if all your stats are bad because you can make profit short term, but if your stats are bad, over time you will end up losing money. It's that simple. So you need to have good stats and you need to have an equity graph that actually looks good. And let's say 
I just took this trade here. And I'm going to give you a lot of hypothetical situations because obviously this is just backtested trades and I don't actually know what happened during this trade. I didn't make any management decisions during this trade, if that makes sense. So what you can actually do here, you, you can see all the information that's been inputted from the CSV file that you have imported from the broker statement. And what I would tend to do is at the end of every week, I would import the statement. Then I would go through and journal all the trades. When I'm actually trading in the markets anyway, what I'll do is I'll save all the screenshots from before and after the trades. And an easy way for me to do it is I send all the trades I take to my Telegram group. So I see all the before and afters and I can basically go through all my trades through that anyway, in real time. And then when I go to journal it, it does make it 10 times easier. But in the personal notes section here, this is where I write a general overview about the trade. So let's say price broke to the downside. It was uh, 30 minutes into the open, let's say. So let's say 8.30 a.m. Price broke to the downside. I set a limit at 8.40. Again, you want to account for every single step of the journey because perhaps there are some days where you're setting the limit too late. You're setting it too early. You don't wait for price to fully play out. You don't... You know, the less you write down, the less you can refer back to if you are studying your losing streaks, you are studying your best streaks in the market because you want to be able to look back and see this is what I was doing or perhaps this is what I wasn't doing and that's why I was winning or that's why I was losing, if that makes sense. I waited for it to come to my entry. Price came with a lot of volatility and within two candles stopped me out again purely hypothetical i have no clue what happened on this trade but again the more you write the better and what i would advise for you is have a template this template could include something like time of day reason for entry reason for setting limit was it an execution was it a limit so you can go through and write down okay next this next this next this if that makes sense and just like you have in the other sections you have predetermined comments that you can make you want to add that for your personal notes too to make it sort of like a test format where you have to see the question and then you answer it and you can copy and paste that in if you do want to do that then we go on to the advanced data and this is quite good because it does give you the tilt which is amazing to see and pre-trade comments let's say you followed your rules boom you click on that there what you can do is add your own filter in here and you can choose it to be neutral, positive, or negative. So again, if there's something that you do that perhaps isn't already on here, you can add that into and adjust it for what you think. So let's say we followed the rules on this one, followed the rules on the entry, trade management, we followed the rules, it hit stop loss, and we followed the rules on exit. So overall, this was a very, very good trade if these were all the, the filters that we actually ended up with. And again, stop loss hit, that's completely fine. You can say break even if it did hit break even, obviously. And then you can add in your custom stats in here that you do want to add. And then we also have screenshots. The good thing about this is you can paste in from TradingView. And I want to go up here and I can copy the link. Let's say you're copying it into an Excel spreadsheet or you're keeping your trade somewhere else. You can literally just paste that in, process the URL, and then you have the trade in here. Or you can just upload the image if you do save it to your computer. Then we can save. And then you see here the tilt meter. This trade is all the way to the right. So let's say we had a, a few other ones, even if they are winners and they were all the way to the red or they were slightly in the red, but we were winning. Perhaps you're winning, but you're breaking the rules to win. And that's definitely something you need to keep an eye on. Whereas if you were just looking at, okay, this is what I was actually doing and I was this making this much money. Let's say I was up 10 grand. It, it seems great. And if from an outside looking in, your trading would seem like you were in a good patch. But if you look back, look at the stats, look at the tilt, you quite quickly realize that you were actually doing something wrong. So even if you are losing, you can see trends. So let's say down here, five trades in a row, I was making terrible decisions. I was breaking the rules and I probably would have been in slight profit on these first five trades. But then I noticed that I was actually breaking the rules. And then I kept a streak of good tilt where I was basically making the right decisions. Then you can say, oh, but even if I'm not making more profit, I'm actually improving on my trading because of the fact that I'm not breaking my rules every single time, if that makes sense. And you will see here on the side, 
once you have actually journaled the trade with the information that you have put in that I just showed you, you can hover over it here and you can quickly go to the screenshots and it will show you which trades don't have screenshots. So perhaps you can go and add them in to make sure you have the pictures, the before and after or even during. Perhaps if you take a screenshot when you're actually making a management decision so you can see what was actually happening that made you do that decision, then it's easier to refer back to the text if you have a picture to match the text. Then quickly here, you can see if you hover over the eyeball, the notes you actually took down. So you can quickly hover over and go through each trade and you don't have to open it and go through all of this information You can quickly hover over it like this. And one thing I love is the all the stats it gives you. So we can go down here and one that I love to look at is the CalMar ratio. If we go down to CalMar ratio, this one here. I want to make my strategy have the highest CalMar ratio possible. As you see, it gives a brief summary here and it says my CalMar is 4.8 line and it is excellent. And it says elite capital efficiency, drawdowns are very small relative to returns. So what a CalMar basically means, and for this strategy in particular, every $1,000 that I'm having in drawdown, I'm returning $4,890 in return. So for every one, I'm making 4.89 back, which is a great metric to actually look for because we all see people have high returns. But you also need to consider the drawdowns. The smaller the drawdown and the higher the return, the better the strategy is in my opinion. Because let's say this one has a 2% yearly drawdown with a 10% return, which would be very, very good stats. It'd be like a, a five camera around that sort of range. What this actually means is, let's say you're okay with risking losing 10% in a year or having a 10% drawdown, you can scale that up to 5x. So your drawdown goes from 2% in a year to 10% in a year. And again, that's quite normal in trading, having a 10% drawdown in a year. But then your profits don't stay at 10%. Your profits then go to 50%. So because you're comfortable risking more and having a higher drawdown, your returns have actually in increased by five times, which again, is great and you can only find out if you're able to do that from stats like the CalMar ratio and having to calculate all of these stats by yourself would be quite difficult and you can go down and look okay for this one the win rate was below average the sharp ratio is poor or the sortino ratio is excellent and you can go through and see which bits of your strategy are actually lacking compared to other parts so then it gives you a good idea of what to improve whereas if you're just entering your trades blindly putting them into an Excel spreadsheet, you're not going to know all of these stats. You only know what you record. And if you simply import those same trades, those same stats into Edgewonk, it will tell you all the same information for you. Then obviously we can see the drawdowns, we can see the holding time, the, uh, you know, any, anything you want to see really, it does make it very, very easy to actually evaluate your positions. So very, very simple. And if you guys do want to sign up to Edgewonk, check the link out down below. And if there's something that's helped you in your journaling, that no one else speaks about, please let me know in the comments because I want to know what you guys are doing rather than just what I know and have picked up from other people that I am friends with in the industry. So be sure to let me know about that too in the comments down below. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.